Hello everyone and welcome back to Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we have our good old trusty ThinkPad G41 back on the bench. This is a system that I had already kind of cleaned up. We took it from e-waste and thought, hey, you know what, is it worth saving? And we proved in that video right there, it was absolutely worth saving. So today we're going to give it a little more love. We're gonna give it a little more of an overview and see if we can do a couple upgrades to it. So as always on this channel, we have lots to do. Let's get right to it. And welcome back. So yeah, I mean, just again, a beautiful looking laptop that we have. And the G41 is extremely chonky. I mean, you can tell by the thickness of this machine, but again, it's very powerful with a Pentium 4, 3 point, uh, I believe it's 3.3 .3 gigahertz that's in this. And, uh, and we have 512 megabytes of RAM and lots of expansion capabilities, as you can see. And you know what, I'm not gonna go through all that because we did that in another video. One of the things that, uh, well, two things I'm missing from this machine. I'm missing the plate that goes over the RAM and the wireless card here. And I'm also missing the plate that goes over the hard disk and the audio ports here. So if anyone knows on the channel where I can get these, please let me know, link them to me, send them via email, whatever, I'm able to get that and I'd love to be able to complete this machine. So one of the things that were suggested on the channel is I installed Windows XP Professional on this machine and you know it worked just great. We were able to run Unreal and quite frankly, I'm very impressed with the speed of this machine. And you know, a couple of users had said, hey, you know, what if you upgrade this to an SSD or some sort of solid state memory. And the same thing with the memory in the uh, in the computer itself. Can, you know, where's 512 megabytes of RAM? Can we upgrade that any further? You know what, we're gonna try doing that on today's video. You know, I'm one to stick with going with the uh, IDE drives, you know, with spinning rust as they call it. And I don't like using solid state memory or solid state type drives in these machines as long as I have them. Uh, it may, mainly for experience. You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, what, why would you go through that hassle? Why do you want to wait longer? Well, the same argument could be had, you know, with any machine that you have, how far can I upgrade it? Well, it's not about that. It's about reliving this experience and what it was like, you know, the speeds that you'd be getting and things like that. However, I'm going to make an exception in today's video because I really want to see this machine in action with slightly different upgrades and the IDE drives specifically are becoming few and far between. They're harder to get. I don't want to wear them out if I don't have to. So in today's video, what we're going to do is I have a couple of sticks of memory here. So we have one gigabyte sticks here. Let me just pull them out of the packaging. I didn't do that yet. You know, they literally just came. So we have one gig DDR of 333 memory here. So we have two of those. I'm hoping that this memory will work in this computer. IBM is very picky when it comes to this memory and you know, the voltages and the speeds and, and all that. So I tried to mimic what we already had. And so I have two gigabytes here. So I'm going to see if we're able to get those installed. It is Windows XP. I don't know if I'm going to be able to squeeze that much out of it. It might be 1.5 or 1.25. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what combination we can get out of this. We may not even be able to use it, but it's good to have anyway. So that's one thing. The second thing I'm going to do is because this is an IDE interface and we do live in the year 2024, they do have adapters now that you can use to be able to hook up different types of drives, solid state drives to an IDE interface. So I'm just gonna open this up real quickly here and you know show everybody what we got. I just love having this sort of things available to us. So you can see this is an IDE interface and this drive will allow us to connect a solid state memory to it. I just think this is absolutely awesome to have. And this is an MSATA 128 gigabyte 
drive, solid state drive. So I'm gonna be utilizing that. I'm gonna be popping that in here and we'll be using that for the upgrade. Now, I don't wanna go and go through all the work of installing this and then having to do everything we did in the last video. So what I'm gonna do is I have another machine here and I'm gonna use an adapter that I have to essentially take this IDE drive plug it into this box in this device here, connect it to another computer and do a complete drive image. So that's gonna take a little bit to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. So that's essentially the process that you do to do a complete image from one disc to another to avoid having to do that. Actually, I do that quite often on the, some of these machines that I find. Remember the Compact Prolinea, the 575 that I have? That's one of those compacts that have the BIOS installed in the hard disk, similar to the Compact Armada 1700 we did a video on. So once I do these restorations, or once I have another computer that I've found that I need to do a backup of or an image of, I do that directly using this uh, adapter. Worth its weight in gold, I tell you, all these little neat adapters allow you to really work on this retro tech. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna move this computer out of the way for a moment just because we just have to get this uh, get this uh, drive kind of set up here. So here's the IDE adapter. We're just gonna take this out and I have no idea if this is gonna work. I mean, on paper it works, but we're gonna see together as we go through. So there is the adapter box. I mean, pretty straightforward. There's nothing to it, to be honest. So I'm just gonna open this up and we'll look inside. So that's all it is, is just an MSATA 2 IDE adapter that we have here. All the logic is on here with the control chips. Yeah, look at that. Just pretty, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, nothing too fancy. And then over here, of course, we have some screws that we're gonna utilize to connect a drive into the enclosure. Okay, that's great, we have that. And now here we have the solid state drive. Nothing too fancy, let me get my knife out here. I don't have my knife knife, but I do have a scalpel here. So we're going to just open that up. Nothing too fancy. Uh, hopefully don't need any stitches today. There we are. I'll take that out of the box. I'm just gonna put this back in before I forget and end up Regretting it later. Okay, so let's pull this out. And there is our M SATA drive with a couple of screws as well. So I mean, between the screws there, screws there, we'll use these screws that came with it just to make sure that we have the right fitment for what we're trying to do. Okay, so to put this in, pretty straightforward. Pop it in here like so, and it fits right in. And it goes down like this on an angle. It's pretty straightforward. And you don't need to do too tight on this, something simple. It's uh, just a little hand tight, that's it. It's not going anywhere, so you don't need to worry about any of that. There we are, we have that in there now. So we're gonna put this back in the enclosure and we're gonna make sure it's all lined up properly. You know, now that the screws are out, we can actually put in the screws that came with it into the enclosure to hold everything together. That's literally how easy this is to do. There we go, we have our M SATA 128 gigabyte drive in our IDE enclosure. So I think that's pretty darn cool. All right, so that, now that that's ready, we're gonna need to take out the other drive. So the other drive, let's bring it over here in our computer and we'll flop this around. And so you can see how it's kind of like just hanging out in there right now because of the, the lack of that uh, kind of protection there. So in order to pull this out, I have a little extraction tool that I can use. So I just have my little like kind of grabbers here that I use for grabbing screws and things like that. Just wrap it around the disc drive here, nothing fancy, and just pull it out of the socket. There we go. Okay, so we have that out and there we are. And there's our IDE drive. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is take this drive and plug it into that enclosure or into that adapter, I should say. And this will allow me to be able to copy over the data and take a direct image using USB 3 over to a modern computer. So you just like, there's not much to do here other than you just pop this on and you're good to go. So I'm gonna pop this in right now. And there it is, it's connected via IDE. Very, very simple. And then you plug in the power and then you plug in directly to your laptop. So I'm gonna go through all that process right now and get all the data copied over to this. 
or from this and get it copied over to our new drive. Okay, and we're done. I just want to call out one thing before I talk about what I did. So along here, you can probably see there, there were pin headers along the bottom side of this drive uh, enclosure. And it already had felt kind of like felt uh, tape along the top here. No doubt protecting it from any sort of risk of shorting out as you put it into the laptop. I don't trust that stuff 100%, so I did use some Kapton tape and just, you know, it prevents any sort of shorting out. I, I just I just added security there. I just wanted to be absolutely sure. Just calling it out in case you saw it while I was working away on here. So what I've done here is I've copied the data over from the IDE drive, took a full image of this, and, you know, interesting fact, the, it took five minutes and 41 seconds to copy the data from this. So basically to take an image of this IDE drive. And this is a 60 gigabyte drive. And you know, it doesn't take an image of the whole drive, obviously it does the data side of it. it. It knows how much free space there is, but it didn't copy 60 gigabytes of data. It only copied what was on the drive. And then over here on the MSATA drive that we have in the enclosure, it took two minutes and 11 seconds to write it back to it, which is just absolutely you know, astounding. Love it. I mean, what do you expect with solid state, of course, but I just wanted to call it out that that's the difference. Okay. So what we're going to do now is get the laptop back over here and pop in that drive. I'm just going to look at the formatting here. Okay. The orientation, and I believe it just goes in like this and you just got to make sure you clear everything as it goes in and be very gentle as you're putting it in. And there we are. We have the drive installed nice and easy. Okay. So what we're going to do before we even touch the RAM, I just want to make sure the computer will post and it will uh, boot into windows XP because obviously that is, uh, that's what we had on this system. So let's get the camera all set up and oriented for the computer. And there we are, there is the G41 laptop in all its glory here. Now, if you remember in the other video, when we had this drive in it, I had a piece of paper that I put in on top of the drive when I slid it in before I turned it on because of that metal that we have over here with that front IO that I believe normally that front bezel or that cover would protect it from touching any sort of uh, metal parts. So I didn't do that on this one because that enclosure that I had uh, that I had ordered for the M SATA drive is plastic. So there's no worry there. And then of course I use the capped on tape to cover over the pin headers that were there. Okay. So we're going to hit the power button. Hope it does boot into windows XP. Okay. So there was definitely some time in between when I was about to press that button to test out the SSD. So essentially what would happen, the computer would boot up and it would come up or sorry, it would post and it would just have a flashing cursor. It wouldn't actually do anything. It wouldn't boot into Windows XP. Even though I did use Macro Reflect and I did copy off of, took a complete image from this IDE drive over to the M SATA drive. So then I thought maybe it's the BIOS on the computer. So I went in and completely updated the BIOS from 1.04 or 06 to 1.16. So a couple of years newer as far as the computer is concerned. And I did that, I upgraded the BIOS, and again, it just would not work. And so I tried different things. I put this back in, of course it booted fine. I put the other drive back in, it would not boot. Anyway, all that to say, I was able to get it going by just completely removing any partitions, making it a raw drive again, popping it in the computer and reinstalling Windows XP. When I did the reinstallation from scratch, it worked perfectly. So I'm gonna hit the power button now, we're gonna boot back into Windows. And here we are, the computer's working just fine and very fast. So remember, the IDE drive, the platter drive has now been removed and now we're operating off of the M SATA that's in that enclosure that we upgraded. And I'm telling you, it's a world of difference. Okay, so with the program that I use for the benchmarking, and this is something that Phil's Computer Lab had used as well, is the bench, uh, the Atto ATTO bench uh, software here. So this is a disk benchmark. It basically does the complete test of the read and write speeds of your drive. So I'm just gonna pull up one I've already done and there's my benchmarks here. So what you're seeing right now are the benchmarks that 
uh, we have for the SSD. Unfortunately, I don't have the ones from the uh, IDE drive that we already had in here. However, I did run it just before I started this whole, you know, the whole adventure of moving over to the MSATA. And so when I had run that, it came up, the maximum read and write speeds I was hitting was between 20 and 25. It varied. And you can see there's a big difference now of even seven megabytes roughly per second based on the data file transfer size. And you can see all the different reads, the top being 32 megabytes a second and writing at 30.8 megabytes a second, which is a big improvement over the IDE drive. Also just installing the software by installing Windows XP, installing all the drivers, installing all the software, I noticed a huge difference in terms of speed by utilizing the SSD. I mean, naturally you think that, right? But I mean, the IDE drive itself was running pretty, pretty well uh, for what it was. And you know, the fact that it was getting between 20 and 25 megabytes per second uh, read and write speeds, and you know, this is a drastic improvement obviously by getting between 25 and 32 now, and it does make a big difference. But again, just showing that it was worth the upgrade to the MSATA versus using the uh, IDE drive. What I wanna do here is just show everybody that new drive. So here we are, now we have a drive that is, uh, let's go back in here. You can see it's a 120 gigabyte drive now versus the 60 that we had before. Okay, we're just gonna go into device manager real quickly and just see the hard disk. So under disk drives, now you now have the Dogfish SSD 128. So a very viable option for this computer. And I keep on forgetting this has the dedicated FX Go 5200 uh, video card. So very nice laptop for sure. The other thing that we have to work on here is the memory. So with 512 megabytes of RAM, we need to upgrade the memory. So we haven't done this yet. So I'm gonna turn this off, we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna upgrade the memory in this laptop. So here we are and we're gonna swap out the memory here. And before anyone makes comments about why I have this taped off, cause they did in the last video, it's cause you can still register Windows XP. And I do have, I keep my licenses because I go through so many machines and I do register a lot of them. And I did happen to register this uh, machine as well. So that's why I do it. Okay, I'm gonna pop out the memory in this machine. We know this memory works, so we're not too worried about it. And I'm just gonna pop those out and I'm gonna take only one stick. So these, as a reminder, are one gigabyte DDR333 RAM. So this is PC2700. This is stuff that I already compared to the stuff that was in this machine. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work. I'm gonna take a, a bet on this and hope the heck it does work, but we're gonna see. Okay, I'm just gonna pop in one module for now just to do a test. Cause we don't wanna, you know, start popping in a bunch of sticks until we absolutely 100% sure it know it's stable. So this is one gigabyte of memory. I mean, already up from 512, makes a big difference. So I'm just gonna pop in the power, pop this down like this, and we'll see if this machine posts. Okay, we'll do a quick power on. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna hit the think, uh, the access IBM button here. See if it's registering the memory. Oh, I didn't have to, it's automatically, I didn't catch it in time. So it is booting into Windows is a good sign so far, but that doesn't always mean that it's going to work. So I've had memory where I've installed it, it's worked up to the desktop, and then it just freezes when it's under load. So we're just gonna boot right into Windows and make sure that it's stable. Okay, under properties, we are showing one gigabyte of RAM now, which is excellent. So, all right. We're gonna shut this off again, and we're gonna see if we can squeeze another gigabyte of memory into this G41 ThinkPad. There we are. I'm gonna pop it down. Okay, here we are. Let's turn it on and see if the machine posts. And we don't have anything. So that's what I meant, right? Because you don't know how much memory you can get out of these systems and what's supported and what's not. So I'm just going to turn it around, reseat the memory and try again and see if we can get a posting. So as an update, this was the stick of memory right here that we tried on this side in this bank. And so for troubleshooting, I decided to take it, take the one that we knew worked out, 
pop this in on this side and the same symptom happened. So it's possible that this memory is bad. So I, I would have gotten it bad directly from the factory. So we're gonna pop in the stick that we know that works, the memory module, pop that in. And we do have one of the ones that we do know work. That was what was in the machine before. So we're gonna pop that in just to hope that both memory sticks will work together and play nice. <laughs> uh, there we are, we have it in. Okay, fingers crossed. And we have post. So I was gonna go into the Access IBM system here for just a moment to see if it registers it in the BIOS. F1, I believe, yep. Okay, there it is. So we have 1.2 gigs of RAM. So it is detecting the memory. So the issue itself is with this stick of RAM, unfortunately. So I'm going to return this and get another one back to me for this machine. So we'll be able to get basically two gigs of RAM in this machine, which is absolutely awesome. All right, let's boot it back into Windows and make sure that the system is stable. Okay, and here we are back to the Windows desktop and everything is seems to be working just fine. I'm gonna go back into my computer under properties and just check to make sure, yeah, we have 1.25 gigs of RAM. I'd love to be able to see that at, uh, you know, running at uh, two gigabytes of RAM, but we'll get there. So we do have the Pentium 4 3.33 gigahertz CPU, which is just a beast in this machine. And again, the fact that it's running at one, uh, with 1.25 gigs of RAM is definitely opening up the possibility specifically with those discrete graphics on this computer. I mean, I'm really turning, starting to turn this into a really retro gaming machine with lots of power from, you know, the 2000s and being able to play some of those games. Okay, and here we are. And I'm absolutely excited to say that, you know, I was already happy with the G41 laptop in our last video, but taking this machine to the next level by upgrading the system from an IDE hard disk, our 60 gigabyte drive, over to that M SATA 128 gigabyte drive in that enclosure is making a world of difference. The experience in using this computer is just absolutely amazing. And you know what, I, I, there's no hesitation. There's no, not at all. The machine just works. And the same thing with upgrading the memory. You know, yes, this is the bad stick of memory, but this is, for example, you know, having the old memory that was in the computer and then upgrading it with a one gigabyte stick. And I would argue that even if we had the two gigabytes of RAM, we would experience even better performance by having two two identical sticks of RAM in there. And we will get that in this machine. This machine definitely deserves it. I love preserving these old IBM ThinkPads. ThinkPads a line that I really enjoy. And you've seen a few of these on the channel and I definitely get my hands on them whenever I can. And as I mentioned before, if you come across any of these machines in the wild and they have their uh, side bezel that covers the audio and the hard disk area, as well as the bottom panel that covers the uh, RAM would be definitely helpful and I would definitely want to hear from you. So please let me know down in the comments or reach out. I would definitely appreciate it. So overall, I give this thumbs up. Absolutely. I would do this again. And any machine that you breathe new life into is definitely worth it in my eyes. That said, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It makes a world of difference for the channel. It helps the channel grow. Hit the notification button. Change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know about, you know, do you have any of the ThinkPad G41s? Did you use these in the past? Have you upgraded any of your older computers? Let me know your stories. I love hearing all the memories that you share. I respond to absolutely every comment. I love the interaction on the channel always making new content. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.